Your new grippers have arrived, you've created an account on gripgains.ca, and you're currently an unhatched egg. It's time to begin your evolution. Today, we'll discuss best practices for onboarding to reach that productive training sessions as quickly and smoothly as possible. To understand onboarding, first you need to understand the Grip Gains application itself. Grip Gains will become your strength coach, delivering workout after workout of perfect RPE 10 sessions. I have a robust data set from years of training in this style, and the workouts are so effective they feel like magic. The app is a dream come true for me, as I mentioned in the announcement video. Just this week, I came home after a long, difficult shift at work, and with zero thought and one click, I served up a perfectly tuned grip workout. In the past, friction alone would have prevented me from training under these circumstances. Before this seamless experience is possible, the application needs to evaluate your current performance level. This is the onboarding process. At the heart of the grip gains training method, is the force curve. Before the application can deliver perfect workouts and robust metrics, it needs to calculate your personalized force curve. Here's how the force curve appears in the Grip Gains application, but this represents the underlying data set. For my robust data, the R-square values are very high, and the curve is a near perfect representation of my current climbing ability. The application uses this data to deliver its workouts. One-click workouts with perfect time and weight are possible because of this robust underlying data. When you're an unhatched egg, the application has no data. Your curve fit will begin at session 10 and become robust around session 30. In this early phase, the suggested weights are approximations. Onboarding can be a bit annoying, but on your 500 session journey to becoming a fully evolved Pokemon, it represents only 2% of your time using the application. People often ask if they should be fully rested for the onboarding. The answer is train in whatever state you would normally be in for your training. You'll have natural dispersion around your force curve as you can see from my raw data. During onboarding, always separate the grippers by one hour. You don't need to be fully rested, but it takes one hour for the pre-fatigue of a hard grip gain style training session to reasonably clear between micro and crusher. Incidentally, this is also why you cannot do this training style before climbing, which is a common question that I receive it roasts your forearms for many hours. To begin onboarding, do the first lift and go to absolute failure in the 40 second zone. The app will fit a generic force curve to this data point and use it to assign workouts during onboarding. Do one workout per day for each gripper with that same one hour separation between. Always go to absolute failure. This is an RPE 10 force curve. The next section is absolutely key. You must do workouts in all five of the domains. Sessions will be categorized by their attained value, not by their target value. These domains approximate the relevant energy systems and muscle fiber types in play. For balanced emphasis, these are the ranges. Power, 40 seconds. Strength power, 72 seconds. Strength, 120 seconds. Strength endurance, 180 seconds. And finally, endurance, 240 seconds. It doesn't need to be exact, but if you don't achieve this spread, you won't get an ideal force curve. If you hold longer than five minutes or less than 20 seconds, discard those workouts and do not save them to the database. If you accidentally save an invalid session, use the delete session button in the profile tab to remove them. If the default force curve is wildly off, adjust your times using the advanced setting to get a weight that brings you down into the approximate target zone based on what we just outlined. For example, if the app prescribes a 240 second hold, but you can go to infinity, this is a common issue when you're working the high exponential zone of the force curve. And the issue is you've slid off basically into the exponential asymptote. So in this case, the way to solve this issue is disregard the session and adjust your time down in the advanced setting so that it prescribes a higher weight. This will raise the weight and hopefully land you into the target zone. Experiment until you get a sense for exactly the adjustment that's needed. If I blow a set in this way during onboarding, I just discard the workout, I do my other hand, I rest for 20 minutes, and then I circle back and try again. You need data points spread across multiple spots between 40 and 240 seconds. Ideally, you need two zones for a linear fit, multiple results in the 40 to 100 second zone, and two zones for an exponential fit, 
with multiple results in the 120 to 240 second zone. This balanced data set will give you a force curve needed for the application to deliver those magic one-click workouts.